All right, let's move on to the preview here of Indiana. Let's start right here, everybody. This Saturday, 3.30 p.m. on CBS. Welcome back to CBS Big Ten football. And they're going to take Ohio State, Indiana. Of course, they're going to want those Ohio State dollars. So that's why that game is going to be a 3.30 kick on CBS. But it's going to look and sound a lot different, Aaron, being on CBS other than Fox or um, ABC or the Big Ten Network. Your thoughts on the game being on CBS? It's weird. It doesn't feel weird. It's like CBS has been SEC for what? Forever, dude. 20 years or yeah, more? Yeah, feels, feels like forever. I mean, I feel like because CBS is what? Channel 10 up here? Yeah. I'm, I'm still not in tune with the channels up here anymore. I'm, I got <laughs> Texas on the brain when it, when it comes to, to, to cable. But it seems to me like when I was a kid through the 90s, Ohio State played on Channel 10. I like, could be wrong. Yeah, when we were little, yeah. Yeah. And then it just it's been a stopped. while. Right. So it's kind of weird, but I get it because at the end of the day, money. That's right. That's right. Show show me the money, CBS. Yes. Sir. All right. Let's break it down by the numbers now, Aaron. So Ohio State leads the all time series with the Hoosiers 78 to 12. There are five ties mixed in there for good measure. Ohio State is on a 27 and a row game winning streak. I wrote about this on scarletandgame.com. Go over there and read this article. This is the longest current win streak in conference play in the country in all conferences in Division I football. It is also the longest winning streak in the Big Ten in history. The longest before this was 24 games between Michigan and Indiana. Indiana defeated Michigan back in, I believe it was 2019, ending that streak. Ohio State has continued their streak on to 27 now, and I look for it to be 28. The last loss to Indiana that Ohio State suffered was a 41-7 defeat in 1988. Earl Bruce was the head coach back then. Last year, Ohio State defeated the Hoosiers in Ohio Stadium by a score of 56-14. to Two years ago in 2021, that was the last time we went to Bloomington, we defeated the Hoosiers 54-7. to The largest margin of victory for Ohio State, well, that was back in 1957 when Woody Hayes defeated the Hoosiers 56-0. to our worst loss ever against Indiana, that was that 1988 defeat of 41-7. to Again, longest current win streak over the Hoosiers, longest win streak over Indiana in history, 27 games. It started in 1991 with John Cooper. The year before that, in 1990, it was a tie, believe it or not. And this win streak should be 28, but they vacated that last win Trestle had over them. Uh, Indiana's longest win streak of Ohio State, believe it or not, Aaron, is four games. That was from 1903 to 1913. Go. There it is. I, <laughs> leather, I don't even know if they were wearing leather helmets at that time. <laughs> Beyond me, we'll have to ask Chris. <laughs> uh, he's not even here to defend himself. Hey, Ryan, Day's, <laughs> Ryan Day's record against Indiana is 4-0, and Tom Allen has a stellar record against the Buckeyes of 0-7. 27 straight, Aaron. That's It's hard to do 27 straight of anything. That's a fact. I mean, for real. Yeah. I, that's incredible. Now, there's been some games in there where, like, like, the COVID game was a little bit scary there. I mean, Indiana made a great comeback in the second half. Yeah. And there were some things happening defensively in that game that we're going to talk about tonight that could possibly we could possibly see again uh, since we're breaking in a new quarterback once again. But, man alive, Aaron, this has been just one heck of a streak. Yeah, yeah. It's What was the date in 1988 that they played? Do we know? I mean, I can find out for you if you give me one second. Yeah, let me look that up for you. There's a reason I ask. Okay, do you remember However, something? 
Maybe. I just need to know the date. Uh, that would be in 1988. I got to scroll down for that. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, that would be October 8th. 8th? 8th. October 8th. Yeah. I was born October 29th. Really? That was the last so time they, they beat us. They have I, not beaten us since before you I were was born. here. That's a fact. Yes, sir. You've never seen an Indiana loss. Just wanted to throw that out there at you. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I, dude, I've, you know, I, some of my more memorable games against Indiana, Antoine Randwell, I don't know if you remember that name, quarterback, ended up being a wide receiver for the Steelers, pretty solid, helped us win a Super Bowl on a trick play. Uh, the game Zeke had a really big coming out game over 200 yards. I think it might've been one of Tom Allen's first years. Boy, that had me scared. That offense was scary. 2014, 2014. I, I, it was either. Yeah. yeah, It was 2014 and, and Kevin Wilson was the head coach. That's who it was. It was Kevin Wilson. Yeah. Yeah, Kevin Wilson. Cause he always, he always played us well though. Yeah. He was there. Yeah, he did. He gave us fits, man. That was a good pickup. And in fact, that was when we, <laughs> when we went to the game. <laughs> good old Carl. <laughs> he had to stay. It was a sign, I think it was. I'll, dude, I'll never forget this. Good old Carl, man. Thanks should, for your should, offensive. Should, Thanks for your we, offense. Should we tell the story? Go for it, dude. All right. So it's a Thursday night. It's a Thursday night game to open the season yeah. on ESPN. Right. And ESPN game days there. And we had made a sign that says, thank you for fixing dear Indiana. Thank you for fixing our offense signed JT Barrett and a big picture of Kevin Wilson. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they wouldn't let signs into the game. And, and Carl tells the guy usher, he goes, that's okay. I know Kirk Herb street personally. He wants us to bring the sign in. And the guy went, oh, okay. And he went us into the stadium just with the right sign. In. And we start holding it up and walking in. And all the Indiana fans, we are getting so many number ones. Oh, yeah. And told how much they, they love us with F words. And, yeah. Oh, and, yeah. of course, I I sat on that sign for the first half, brother, because that, that was a scary first half. And after we took control of the Indiana fans are all leaving, I'm holding the sign up, turned around, facing the crowd as they walk by me. And some people are laughing. They're getting, you know, they're getting the idea, you know, okay, that's pretty funny. Some people there, I'll never forget. I thought I was going to get punched by one guy, dude. He was mad. And, uh, but yeah, yeah that was a great time, that's, man. That's what I remember. Cause we went, it was, it was basically a bunch of us from church is what yeah. it was. And we took a, a us out there. It was a good time. But Eric, I'm pretty sure you and I were the youngest people there. Like, oh yeah, by far. If we got jumped, buddy, it was on in you. You know, <laughs> like we were gonna have to do something about it. Yeah. And I was like, oh crap, yeah. dude. <laughs> Please put the sign down. <laughs> oh well. Uh, let's look at the last ten games that Ohio State and Indiana have played, and of course they're all Ohio State victories. Going back to 2013, where you had the 42-14 win. 2014, that's the one that you were talking about with Zeke, a 42-27 win. Look at that one in 2015. That's probably the best roster we have had. And that was a 34-27 win. That's hmm. That tells you how good Kevin Wilson had, had those teams playing then. 2016, 38-17 2017, 49-21. I feel that was the year we went to Bloomington. That was the game we were, we were talking about. 2018, a 49-26 win at home. 2019, that was a 51-10 blowout. And then you had the COVID game in 2020, 42-35 in Columbus. Again, a seven-point game. Last couple years, Ryan Day has taken the bull by the horns, and Indiana hasn't been very good, 54-7 and 56-14 in the last 10 games against the Hoosiers. Let me ask you this question next, Aaron, before we break down some film. Is Indiana catching Ohio State at the beginning of the season good for them or bad? They have depth issues usually. Catching them late in the season, they're beat up. They're not as deep. Mm -hmm. 
They're tired. Catching Ohio State at the beginning of the season, is that better for Indiana? Or is it we don't really know what we're going to see type of thing and it's bad for them? Or does it not really matter? Oh, it absolutely matters. It, it's definitely beneficial to them for all the reasons you said. They have a fully healthy football team. And then throw the fact that breaking in a new quarterback, we don't know what we're going to be looking like either. So sure. that, and that that goes into the, the game strategy that I foresee when we go to break down the film later on. So all right, good yeah. thing for them. 